If you were a scientist and you wanted to understand if excess dietary protein turned into muscle or fat, an effective way to do that would be to get some volunteers to check into an inpatient metabolic ward and feed them a lot of protein. This is exactly what a group of researchers did. They found that when higher protein levels are consumed alongside excess calories, the protein is not converted into fat and stored, but instead increases lean mass. In this video, I'll explain some important points from the study and how much protein you need to eat to mimic the results. Now, this study was small with only 23 sedentary adult volunteers. However, it had an element that greatly enhanced its validity, namely that the participants were admitted to a metabolic ward, so their food intake was under close observation for the entire eight weeks of the study. The subjects were randomly assigned to one of three diets, a low protein diet where protein made up only 5% of their energy intake, a medium protein diet providing 15% of their energy needs, and a high protein diet where protein accounted for 25% of their total energy intake. Now, this was not a weight loss study. Actually, it was the opposite. The participants in all three groups were purposely overfed by roughly 40% of their caloric needs. The extra calories were derived from fat. Carbohydrate intake was kept constant across the three diets. Now, when you overeat by 40% of your caloric needs, you will gain weight and store fat because there is simply too much energy coming in. And sure enough, all three groups gained weight with the high protein group gaining twice as much weight as the low protein group. But here's the thing, all three groups gained the same amount of fat. So why did the two higher protein groups end up gaining more weight than the low protein group? Because those groups also gained fat-free mass, aka muscle. The low protein group actually lost muscle mass. The takeaway is this. While increased protein intake alongside excess calories results in greater overall weight gain, that gain is primarily lean mass, not because protein is being converted into fat and stored. I will go over how to use this information and how much protein you need if you want to gain muscle and lose fat in a moment. But first, I wanna take a minute to talk about element. When you are putting together a healthy diet, you want it to consist of whole foods. Over 70% of the sodium in the average diet comes from ultra processed foods, not the salt shaker. Cutting out junk food often means losing critical electrolytes your body needs, making targeted replenishment even more important. That is why I partner with Element. They make it easy to replenish the electrolytes your body needs without the junk. Element is formulated for anyone who stands to benefit from healthy hydration and is perfectly suited for athletes, folks who are fasting, or those following keto, low carb, or whole food diets. Each stick delivers a meaningful dose of electrolytes with zero added sugar. I don't go a day without it and enjoy the great flavors. You can get a free sample pack of Element's most popular drink mix flavors with any purchase at drinklmnt.com forward slash Dr. Becky. I will leave a link in the description area below this video. Now from time to time, I get comments from people who are trying to gain weight. This study shows you how to do that. Eat up to 40% more calories than your body needs and get up to 25% of your overall caloric intake from protein. But what if you are looking to improve your body composition by gaining muscle and losing weight or body fat? There are studies such as this one that reviewed multiple studies involving more than 2,500 participants that found a positive association between protein intake and weight loss regardless of the total energy intake. The investigator stated that consuming more protein than the recommended dietary allowance not only reduces body weight, but also enhances body composition by decreasing fat mass while preserving fat-free mass in both low-calorie and standard-calorie diets. Study recommendations differ, but to aid weight loss and support muscle, a daily protein intake of at least 1.6 grams per kilogram of body weight is generally advised. In the main study that I am highlighting, subjects in the moderate protein diet consumed 1.8 grams per kilogram. So if we use that level as an example, 
An individual weighing 68 kilograms or 150 pounds should aim for 122 grams of protein daily. If you weigh 82 kilograms or 180 pounds, aim for 148 grams per day. You can spread your protein intake throughout your daily meals and snacks. Some good protein sources to support weight loss include meat, poultry, fish, seafood, eggs, cheese, unsweetened yogurt, and high quality protein powder. You can also get protein from legumes like lentils and beans, as well as raw and lightly toasted nuts and seeds, but they will have a higher carbohydrate content, which is something to be aware of if you follow a low carb or keto diet. Your body processes protein differently than it does fat or carbohydrates. And because of dietary protein's unique qualities, it supports weight loss in many ways. One of the reasons your body treats dietary protein differently is because protein's primary role is structural and functional, not fuel. When you consume protein, your body first prioritizes using it for its critical functions, like building and repairing tissues, producing enzymes and hormones, and supporting your immune system. Only after these needs are met does the body consider using it for fuel. On top of that, the conversion of protein to fat is a metabolically demanding process that the body generally prefers to avoid. It's more efficient for the body to make body fat from excess dietary carbs and fats. Dietary protein is also hard to break down. The thermic effect of food refers to the amount of energy your body uses to digest, absorb, and metabolize nutrients. Protein has a high thermic effect with some sources saying it is as high as 20 to 30%. That means if you eat 100 calories of protein, your body only absorbs about 70 or 80 of them because it uses 20 to 30 calories to process the protein. And protein is a satiating nutrient, meaning when you eat it, you feel fuller for longer. This can naturally lead to a reduction in overall calorie intake, making it less likely that excess calories from any source, including protein, will be stored as fat. Protein is essential for good health, and the level of protein we need changes based on our age, activity level, body composition goals, and overall health status. In this video, we focused on how protein supports weight loss and muscle growth, and found that a good target for protein intake is about 1.8 grams per kilogram of body weight. If you weigh yourself in pounds, multiply your weight by 0.82. I hope you found this video interesting and informative. Let me know your experience with protein. Do you find that making a conscious effort to increase protein helps you control hunger and control your weight? If so, share what you've found to be true for you in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.